Hi, GIMP now has non-destructive editing. I've got some updates on a deconvolution tool I've been working on, plus another secret tool. And we need to talk about the future of the channel. Timestamps are in the description. Welcome to Deep Sky Detail. First, let's talk about some housekeeping in a brutally honest way. I've been thinking about the direction of this channel and its growth. You've probably already noticed that the video is a bit different than my previous videos. For the past few months, most of my videos have taken up a lot of my spare time and a lot of energy. From doing meticulous testing about sub-exposure length to improving my SNR calculator tool, to doing deep dives into F-ratio and aperture, and in between all that stuff, I've been working on making a new deconvolution tool. I think the tool is progressing, but having videos come out only once a month doesn't help grow the channel very much. I may not be very good at making videos, but the work that I do put into the videos is like having a second job without a lot of the benefits of a second job. It can get really tiring. Plus, there is the fact that I'm still recovering from shoulder surgery. That makes things a little bit more stressful but I'd like to have the channel grow so that I can do cool things. So I've been thinking, I'd also like to sometimes just sit around and talk in between the big projects, from things like updates to GIMP, to what I'm doing in general, to the latest Astro tools, to philosophy or, or whatever. I've met a ton of cool people creating the channel, and so I think I'll create a new, possibly weekly or bi-weekly series called Telescope Talk, where we can just discuss all things astronomy, philosophy, psychology, or whatever. My hope is that the series can just help me unwind a bit from the bigger projects and save me from burning out. Okay, let's get into GIMP and non-destructive editing. So GIMP 3.0 is going to be released soon-ish, maybe within the next year or five years. It's 96% of the way done according to the developers. I'd like to hear your thoughts. Do you use GIMP? I think most people use Photoshop as a general image editor, but Photoshop to me is not worth a monthly subscription. If I have software, I, I want to own the software. And GIMP has been a popular choice for a lot of people because it's free. It's relatively powerful, not as powerful as Photoshop, but it's pretty good once you get used to it. The thing is GIMP is not really user friendly. And one of the biggest reasons that if you apply a filter to a layer, it, it edits that layer destructively. It changes all the pixels with each filter that you add on. In Photoshop, you can just add an adjustment later to another layer or a group of layers, and it won't alter the original layer. That's really helpful in astro processing where you may want to be able to stretch the image to see what it looks like, do something else like noise reduction or gradient removal before you actually stretch the pixels. GIMP hasn't been able to do that until version 3.0, which has not as the making of this video been released. But there is GIMP 2.99, a development version pre-release that has non-destructive editing. It was released a few months back. I'm a little bit late to the game, but I've been doing some testing with it. As someone who enjoys open source software, you think I'd, I'd have rave reviews about it. And while I think GIMP is heading in the right direction, when using GIMP 2.99, I'm somewhat underwhelmed. I think GIMP 3.0 will fix things, but let me show you what the tool is like now. Here's an unstretched version of the Veil Nebula I took a few years back. Let's look at the histogram. See how far the peak is to the left? I'm going to go ahead and add a levels adjustment to make it brighter. All right, so I've done that, and GIMP automatically adds the edit as its own separate filter here, clicking on this little button, which is non-destructive and good, but the original histogram still shows up in the levels tool. So if I want to stretch the image again, I can't rely on the histogram to determine whether I'm clipping or not. In other words, how far can I bring the black point up before I'm destroying information? I don't know. And the second stretch just adds the new stretch as a new filter. To see the histogram with the filters applied, I have to merge the filters into the layer, which is destructive editing. Don't get me wrong, this update is huge, and I think the official release of GIMP 3.0 will improve things a lot, 
And I'm really glad the developers have volunteered and worked so long. I still like GIMP, I'll still be using GIMP, and here's hoping the official release improves how non-destructive editing works. And if you've been wanting to move on from Photoshop to GIMP, but haven't because GIMP doesn't allow for non-destructive editing using adjustment layers, I think you should give this a try. So, AstroSharp. I know I've been saying I'm working on a new deconvolution tool, which I am, and I know it is taking a while. I'm sorry about that. During the past few weeks, Cosmic Clarity by Seti Astro has come out, which I think is much better than what AstroSharp is right now, in all honesty. I've asked myself whether I should keep going with it, developing the tool. What do you think? And I, I've heard rumors of other tools being developed specifically for Astro images related to deconvolution, and I'm just not sure that it's at this point worth my time. Let me know what you think. Do you think I should still put out this tool? I'm, I'm still leaning towards yes. I don't want to throw away all the work I've done and I'd like to let you guys all try it, but just let me know in the comments. But here are my thoughts in general. I'm getting worried about sort of AI in general, especially related to astrophotography images. It's kind of easy to take a bunch of blurry images, put them in a neural network and have it sharpen them. I really tried to constrain AstroSharp by only allowing it to change the brightness of one pixel at a time, which is one of the reasons it takes so long to process the image. But that way it doesn't have wild hallucinations. When you put any image into a neural network, it can theoretically change every pixel in the image. I know that Franklin from SETI Astro and Russell Croman, the creator of BlurX, put a lot of thought into what makes a good sharpening tool while not having the tools create structure that isn't there. End of the day, I want to have the same confidence that Russell Croman has when he says he created an AI-assisted deconvolution tool. I want the tool to primarily do non-blind deconvolution with the AI assisting to clean up artifacts that deconvolution creates. This has led me to create several models and iterations of models using principles related to Wiener or Richardson Lucy deconvolution. I'm not quite satisfied with what I've created, but I'm getting real close, I think. And what I've realized is this, I need to work on stars a lot more. And so I've been working on something secret. Yeah, a secret project. What do you think it is? In order to speed things up, I'm now training my models on another separate computer, one that I don't use daily. Here it is now. It's a tool that I think I need to develop to get the deconvolution tool working. Feel free to comment on what you think it is. I'll give you a hint. I'm hoping that it will help the deconvolution tool estimate the point spread function of an image based on the stars. If you want to learn more about deconvolution general, I suggest watching these couple of videos I made. Thanks for watching.